But uh, I do want to get over the trades we made yesterday and then the one trade we made today because a lot of it was adjustments. So before we get into the adjustments for Netflix and Yahoo, I wanted to just briefly talk about our closing trade in XOM. And I think this one's really important because it really highlights this whole idea that we've been working with constantly about picking the right strategies in the right market, right? Using the right tools for the right opportunity and not trying to force round pegs into a square hole, if you will, trying to force the same old strategy into the same old market situation, whatever the case is. And I say it all the time on my coachings, but strategy selection is one of the key definers between in what I believe to be good traders and bad traders, right? Is the ability to look at a market and choose the right strategy. And we, we talk a lot about it here on the videos. We talk a lot about it on the blog. We're going to be talking a ton about it on the upcoming podcast as I'm starting to get, get that stuff ready to go for you guys. Um, so we're going to be continuing to drive home this point. But today, ExxonMobil really, really drives home the point um, because the stock really didn't move anywhere, and yet we made money on this trade. So the trade that we closed out of was our short vertical credit spread that we had originally had we originally sold the 95 and bought the 92 and a half strikes. So by closing out this trade, we are now buying the 95 to close out and selling the 92 and a half to close out the trade. So that's the actual logistics and, and the mechanics of the trade. We ended up paying a 20 cent debit, but again, we taking it off at our profit targets of making over 50%, about 75% or so of our max potential profit in this trade. So we sold this for originally 48 cents as far as a credit bought it back today for 20 cent debit, so we made $28 on each of these, right? But the whole idea here is that with this trade, you'll look at the chart of ExxonMobil, and from the time that we actually sold this, which it was a couple weeks ago, it was kind of in this time period, I don't know the exact day, but I mean, you'll look at the stock, and the stock has gone nowhere. I mean, it's, okay, ever so slightly moved higher, but but basically the stock has gone nowhere. There's been days where it's it's gone down, there's been days where it's gone a little bit higher, more or less the stock has moved less than half a dollar, which for a hundred dollar stock is practically nothing. That's almost less than like a quarter of a percent for the stock. So it's really moved very, very minimal. Now, what has moved, and this is the key driver as to why we were able to take profits, is implied volatility. When we enter this trade, implied volatility for Exxon was over that 50th percentile that we talk about so many times here at Option Alpha, and it's in our strategy guides, in our blog posts, it's going to be a big topic again on the, on the podcast I'm starting to fill up for you guys. But now implied volatility for Exxon has come down to 2%. So with implied volatility dropping, the stock had to move absolutely nowhere and we, able, we were able to take a profit on this trade. So again, just a really, really good case study on why you make trades that are the right side of volatility now. And so everything happened that we wanted to happen. Could we wait for a little bit of more of a move higher in Exxon? Sure, but again, we don't know where the stock is going. So we, we played volatility. That's what we generally do as, as option sellers. And we made some money, so you just got to get out of the trade. All right, so the two trades that we had as adjustments, the first one is Netflix. These are both trades. Netflix and Exxon were both trades that we made yesterday on Monday. Now, Netflix is a little interesting because we have a short I'm sorry, we have a debit put spread in Netflix assuming that the stock was going to go down. And we didn't get rid of that position. So this position that we added, which was a credit put spread, a very wide credit put spread, actually is a position that we're adding to our current debit put spread. So I'm going to go over all the details with the Analyze tab. I know a lot of you guys love that stuff. I'm definitely going to go over all those. But the actual logistics of what we did is we went back in and sold the September 430, 460 credit put spread. I know this is very, very wide, and I'll talk about it in a minute as to why we did this very, very wide. There's rationale behind this, obviously. But we went in and sold the 435 put options and then bought really, really far out of the money 360 put options, and that gave us an overall credit of 372. So that basically gives us a synthetic short put, put position in Netflix, which helps reduce our cost basis on this trade should Netflix continue to move higher, okay? So what does that all mean? So let's go in here and let's just take a look at Netflix as far as the chart. And you can see that the stock obviously has continued to move higher, right? Against our debit put spread, we want Netflix to go down. And look, we've got a lot of time between now and expiration. This stock can easily turn around. This is a very fast moving stock. You'll notice even last month, the stock really jumped middle of the month and then continued to move lower. So 
there's no telling what the stock can do. And, and, and a lot of people think, oh, it's moving higher. It's going to move higher for the rest of the month. I, I can show you guys a million examples of stocks that didn't do that. But in case it doesn't, this is why we have made this position and this, and this hedge, at least for the short term. So we go in here to our Analyze tab, and this is what our profit loss diagram looks like currently before the hedge was applied. So before the hedge was applied, we had a very simple debit put spread. I know I can't draw right on those lines, but a very simple debit put spread, the 4, uh, 425, 430. And you'll notice Netflix is actually trading all the way up here. It's at 468. So very, very deep in the money put spread. And that put spread is actually losing a lot of money, right? Now, originally, had we done nothing to this trade, we would have lost at expiration about $514 as it currently stood Monday before we made this adjustment. Now, I don't know about you, but we talk a lot about on the, on the site here uh, managing trades that go against us. And yes, we close out trades like we did in Exxon, and we kind of briefly go over those because they're winning trades. You go over them, they're winning trades, they're easy, it made a profit, and you close it out. And we do that all month long until we get trades like this, and this is a good learning example as to what we do to help mitigate some of the risk of trades that go against you. So, the base case study here is that if we do nothing, which is what 99% of traders do, is they take a trade that goes against them and they say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to lose $514 on this trade. So what? They close it out and, and move on. Now, what we did is we added a synthetic short put option. So I'm going to add both of these options in here, and it kind of creates a basically synthetic put option in Netflix. So now we have still a loss here if Netflix does nothing, but our loss is really capped all the way until Netflix gets down to about 425 and then we start really losing more money. So we've got pretty much cap loss. Netflix can really go much, much higher than here. It doesn't really hurt our position at all. So this is why this hedge works. But in the worst case scenario, or not in the best case scenario, at least right now, if Netflix does continue higher, rather than lose $514, our max loss has now been cut with just this one adjustment down to $142. And that's if nothing happens, Netflix stays here or even goes lower down to like 430, 420. Our max loss stays at 142. And again, I don't know if this is uh, exactly what you guys really want, but I get a lot of questions from people saying, you know, Kirk, how do you reduce losses on trades? How do you adjust it? This is the essence of trading right here is taking a trade that is going to lose 500 plus dollars and making an adjustment so that it only loses 142 dollars. And I bet you can think back on a couple of times where you had really, really big losses and said, you know what, if I could just cut that loss in half, I'd be happy. Or if I could just, you know, save 100 bucks or 150 bucks on that trade, you know, I'd be happy. Well, in this case, we're cutting it from 514 down to 142, right? And we're not done yet. We have many more adjustments that we can make on top of this to make this a profitable trade. But really, in kind of the base scenario now, we have this loss down to $142 if Netflix continues to move higher. Now, what's really, really key about this particular trade is how we did it with this wide credit spread, right? Why did we do a wide credit spread? Well, the reason that we did this is because we wanted a big premium, right? And we wanted a big premium, so we wanted to go ahead and sell the 435s. That was our first strike is to sell those 435s. But just selling those 435s naked gave us a lot of margin usage. So the broker really hit us for margin because... We're selling a put option naked on a stock that's worth $435. So again, selling that naked option gave us a lot of margin usage. I mean, the brokerage in Thinkorswim wanted to take a lot of margin out of our account and use that margin to cover this position, and rightfully so. We're selling options naked on a stock that's $435. There's a lot of downside room. So what we decided to do instead was still sell that option, but to go really far out of the money to an option that has some value, right? It's got some value of about $30 or so, and buy this option and create a very wide credit spread. So that's exactly what we did. So we went further out of the money, made this thing really wide, but by buying this option here at 360, even though we paid only $30 for it, we assume that it's never gonna make any money. That $30 freed up a ton of our margin exposure from Thinkorswim. So we got back I think it was like over 60% of the margin that they wanted to take for just selling the naked option. So this is really a key differentiator between some traders is that using just strategies like this where you're just 
kind of looking at margin in a different way, looking at your capital usage. We could have easily sold the 435, covered the margin, collected an extra $30. But to me, it's worth keeping some of that margin um, intact and not letting the broker use a lot of that margin by just going out here and buying this out of the money option and making this a very, very wide credit spread. So if I go back now to the Analyze tab and kind of scroll all the way over here, now you see that all the way out on this further edge, now we have this, this part out here at 360 where our profit and loss line kind of flatlines. So if Netflix were to absolutely crash, we still have risk-defined trade here. It would be about $7,000 loss, which we obviously don't want. But that's if Netflix was to absolutely and emphatically crash between now and September expiration. So hopefully that's a good insight as to where our position is in Netflix. Again, we really are only going to lose 142 currently if we make no other adjustments, which I definitely plan to make more adjustments. Maybe roll up this put side if Netflix continues higher, add a call side to this trade. There's a lot of different things that we can work with. But for now, we're just going to let Netflix kind of work itself out and see where it goes over the next week or so uh, before we make any adjustments. Okay, so kind of beat a dead horse there with Netflix. But again, this is what you guys want. This is what I'm delivering as far as education and teaching you guys what we're doing here to reduce loss and, and increase our gains and, and, and income each month. Now, the next adjustment that we make is a very simple adjustment, so I'm not going to cover it too, too much in depth because we made it a number of times before. But this is our trade in Yahoo. So we originally had a call credit spread in Yahoo. So we had sold a credit spread above the market, assuming Yahoo would go down or implied volatility would go down. And now Yahoo is kind of banging on the doorstep of our short strike on the top side. So what we did is went back in here and sold a credit put spread against that position to create an iron condor in Yahoo. So we went in and sold, excuse me, sold the 3534 credit put spread. So we sold the 35 options, bought the 34 options, and took in a credit of 27 cents. Now what I love about this position and doing this with some of your vertical spreads is that it does two things. It one, minimizes your overall loss. So because we matched up the width of the strikes, which is a dollar, and we did the same number of contracts on the put side as we did on the call side, we absolutely emphatically cannot lose more money than we uh, did before. In fact, we can only lose less money. So it reduces our overall risk because we took in a credit. The second thing is that because we took in a credit of 27 cents, it also increases our potential gain. So if Yahoo does turn around in the next couple of days and weeks, and actually settles into this range that we've kind of range bounded with this iron condor, then we actually stand to make much, much more money than we are actually putting at risk right now. So really, really good adjustment to trades is to make this, this trade in Yahoo. And I'll go to the risk diagram here so you guys can see it. And let me just actually take off this put side trade so you can see what the call side trade looks like right now. So this is what it looked like before we made this adjustment today. Again, we have the 3839 credit call spread. And notice that Yahoo is trading right at 3783. So it's really getting close to our short strike and starting to go into the money. So again, rather than let this thing go all the way higher, lose $296 if it goes all the way beyond 39, we went back in and sold the 3534 credit put spread. So now we have this iron condor that still we would like Yahoo to continue to move low, right? And we'll adjust up this put side if we need to continue to move it low, higher if Yahoo trades higher. But right now, it's still about 30 days to go till expiration. We want to give Yahoo some time to move back inside this range and start to materialize a profit. But the key here is that now our max potential gain is almost $212. And our loss has been cut down to 188 in the worst case scenario if we made no other adjustments to this position uh, right now as it stands. So it gives us a really good idea of how you can adjust these cred spreads, create an iron condor out of it. What I did want to show you guys is I want to show you exactly where we place that position as far as probability. So right here below, you'll notice that where we actually place that put spread position was right at about the 75% probability level. It's gone down just a little bit after the close here, or during the day between the time we made it and now. But we placed that first strike right at the 75% probability level because we still want to potentially make money on this trade. So we want to adjust this strategy with a high probability put side. So we didn't get too close. We didn't come in here to 37 or 36. 
Again, there's still about 30 days to go in expiration, so we want to give Yahoo a, a nice little window here between 35 and 38 to trade for us to make money. If I go to the chart here of Yahoo, just to kind of wrap it up, you guys can see that the window of opportunity is between 35 and 38. So we definitely still want Yahoo to continue to move lower, but if it does move higher, then what we'll do is we'll just roll up this 35 up to maybe 36 or up to maybe 37, something like that. We'll just roll it closer, take in more credit, reduce our risk on this trade. And that's exactly what the essence of trading is. Um, and I go over it all the time with people. And really, I hope this video kind of helps with that as well with these adjustments. So as always, if you guys have any questions at all about these trades that we made, please let me know. Add them in the comment section below. I'll get back to all of those tonight or tomorrow before the open and happy trading.